Welcome to the program. My name is Safin Aching and uh, thank you so much uh, that you could stay with us until uh, this far. And among all the lifestyle decisions that you should be making this year, actually dieting, detox, and involving yourself in plenty of physical activity is something that you should make your daily habit. So today, like I told you, the, the theme is all about knowing how to balance these three most important aspects of our daily living. And now that we have so much information about detox, and we've also had a chance to interact and learn about physical activity, especially when you're managing your weight or you are on a weight loss program now it's about time we talk about what to eat how much we need to eat and when we need to eat i know it's a basic issue but then again these are things that you need to understand because most of us actually complain of weight issues and a lot of lifestyle diseases based on you know lack of information in terms of what we prepare what we consume at times we consume the right things in large amounts at times we consume them in less amounts so it's just a lot of information that we need to consume and this morning is all about awareness in case you're managing your weight or you're trying to cut off a few pounds that you gained over the season so right about now we want to talk about weight loss a diet you know after going through a successful detox program and you know you've started uh, enjoying all those benefits that comes with it the best you can do yourself the best favor you can offer yourself is to eat the right things because you do not want to go back to where you were before you cleansed your body in and out so what do you consume in that clean body that now you have. That is the conversation we want to start right about now. And I'm joined uh, by my guest uh, for the morning, Laura Atika. She's a nutritionist and uh, she also, she comes from Neosol Nutrition Consultants. And uh, they've done a lot in terms of just helping people know what they need and the problems that they have. And she'll tell us more about that as we start this conversation. Thank you so much for joining me this morning. Thank you for having me. Yes, and mm -hmm. probably before we even start our conversation, sure. um, a chance to say hello to my viewer and tell us more about yourself, Laura. Hi viewers, good morning. Mm -hmm. My name is Laura. I'm a nutrition cons nutritionist consultant mm -hmm. at New Soul Nutrition Consultancy. Mm -hmm. One of our major roles. Mm -hmm. This is your camera, Laura. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you for that. One of our major functions and our duties is the weight loss program. Mm -hmm. Among other nutrition aspects, we focus on weight loss and weight management for our clients. So that is what we'll be discussing today. Okay, thank you so much for creating mm -hmm. time for us. Sure. And uh, earlier we had a conversation about detox with yeah. one Virginia Nyaga, mm -hmm. also a nutritionist, and it was an amazing session. We interacted and learned a lot of issues in, with regards to how we need to cleanse our body in and out. So now that our bodies are clean we really do not want to take back all the toxins that we were trying to clean up so let's talk about what to eat okay first of all let's start by understanding how is it that we gain weight for them that are trying to manage their current weight and them that are trying to cut how do we gain weight there are many reasons why we gain weight mm -hmm. first of all it could be taking too much and another reason it could be taking enough but the wrong mm -hmm. the wrong amounts and then just sedentary lifestyle, lack of exercise. Mm -hmm. So these are the three major causes of weight loss. By eating what is not right, what are the calories you are eating? Mm -hmm. You may be eating a little. Some, someone may say, I only take soda, but soda has so much calories. Yeah. That one is gone is so much weight loss. Mm -hmm. Again, another person may just be a secretary somewhere, just an office job, mm -hmm. just sedentary lifestyle. Those are the major causes of weight gain. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we'll talk about all that, especially mm -hmm. when you touch on calories, yeah. how to calculate, how mm -hmm. to know the measurements. Sure. That is something most people do not understand. Mm -hmm. But before we get there, mm -hmm. uh, before we even start losing weight or making a decision whether I need to lose or I need to maintain my weight yeah. there has to be an understanding of whether my current weight yeah. is okay mm -hmm. and is healthy mm -hmm. talk to us about uh, how to determine the IBW the mm -hmm. ideal body weight because many mm -hmm. people try to lose weight just because they want to be slender and it's stylish but yeah. then probably maybe if you talk to a, pro a professional they will advise you not yeah. to but to keep fit instead there are so many reasons to establish if your weight is in the right margin. The first one we talk about the BMI. Mm -hmm. BMI is just a calculation of your height, your height in meters, you square it, then you divide by your kgs. Mm -hmm. So when we get these ranges, if the value is between 18 to 24, mm -hmm. you, are no, you are normal. That means okay. your weight doesn't need to be 
gained or lost. Okay. But if your BMI value goes below 24.9, mm -hmm. that means you are now underweight. You, mm -hmm. need, you need to do something to bring this weight up. But when your weight... Below 18 or below 20? Below, uh, sorry, below... Below oh. 18. Below... <laughs> Okay, <laughs> so that's something sure. that you need to check. Yeah, let also. me check it from the top. Okay, the BMI between eighteen, between anything above twenty four point nine is overweight. Overweight. Okay. So anything above twenty four point nine, we need to work on ways to bring this weight down. Okay. But if you are below eighteen, that is your underweight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you get it. Now you get now it. it's clear. <laughs> Let's talk about you know, aside from knowing uh, you know mm -hmm. the weight and whether you need to cut or gain. Yeah. How else will having the information or about mm -hmm. BMI help you? What other aspects of our lives can that information help us? In? It will help us in managing what to eat. On a normal range, a normal female who is above 18, mm -hmm. the calories should not, be, should not go above 2,000. So that is for a normal range. Mm -hmm. But for an individual who has specific values, by, by specific values, mm -hmm. you have your BMI values. You will need to work a calorie intake for you, mm -hmm. which means in a specific day you ho you work out what amount you're supposed to eat, mm -hmm. and it does not go above that. Okay. That way, you are able to maintain your weight at a certain level. Okay. Yeah. Wow. There you have it. You need mm -hmm. to first of all understand your BMI on that journey to your ideal body weight. Yeah. You just can't wake up and decide that mm -hmm. I want to lose weight or sure. I want to gain weight. Mm -hmm. There has to be some calculations you do to know how healthy it is for you, what to consume, how much you need to cut. It's not just a decision you make and you go all the way. So let's talk about, you know, what we consume, food. Yeah. Most of us, I'm not saying I'm one of them, <laughs> but <laughs> I could fall in that category depending on how you look at it. Yeah. It's all about, I'm hungry, I need something. Mm -hmm. So you prepare anything and then you eat. Yeah. Many people do not go into the nitty gritties of why is it that we need food yeah. and what is in that food that is uh, healthy to our body mm -hmm. and why do we need it mm -hmm. you know what will it do to our body yeah. talk to us basically just define food for us for okay. us to understand mm -hmm. its value the nutrition definition of food is anything that ingested into the body to provide a nutrition value mm -hmm. by providing nutrition value this food has to be digested and when it is digested and metabolized we need the nutrition value for the nutrition value we need things like carbohydrates mm -hmm. the proteins and the vitamins and the minerals mm -hmm. so when you are taking food all these elements have to be in proportion so that you don't take excess of one mm -hmm. less of less another of these proportions in a day, let's say for carbohydrates, do 50 to 65%. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. For fats, make it 10 to 35%. Mm -hmm. So that when you're eating, you don't overdo all these percentages that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And vitamins too. The percentages don't go beyond 30 in a day. Mm -hmm. So when we ingest food, don't just throw in food. Look at what that food has, how much carbs does it have, okay. how many vitamins and all that. Mm -hmm. That way we'll, we'll be able to work out the nutrient value in our body. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, and we are going to talk about that mm -hmm. about that shortly, like how to calculate what, yeah, and even sure. to determine how much mm -hmm. you need. But mm -hmm. then, for them who are constantly feeling hungry, yeah. they always feel like they want to eat something. Mm -hmm. I know a friend who knows a friend who does <laughs> that. Does it is it a signal that there is something wrong with your system? Okay, when you feel constantly hungry, you'll be tempted to pick up any food that you find, and most of this food you find that in most cases. Mm -hmm. Just go on. In most cases, these foods, the ones you pick, let's say you feel hungry, you pick a biscuit, you pick a sweet. Most of these food have what we call a high GI value. Mm -hmm. A GI value is something that will raise your sugar level and at, after some time it drops again, so you'll feel hungry again. Okay. This brings that what we call the urge to eat. Mm -hmm. So you find that after binging into all these small foods when you feel hungry, it fills you for a short time, but again, you feel mm -hmm. hungry, then you go eat a, larger, a larger mm -hmm. portion. Mm -hmm. That is one of the major causes of weight gain. Okay. Yes. So eating mm -hmm. the wrong kind of things. Eating the wrong kind you, of things. You feel like you're eating so much, but then you're you never getting binge, food. Then you just binge, binge, binge. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> wow. We'll really learn a lot by the end of yeah, this session. Sure. But then let's talk, to, uh, talk about uh, the elephant in the room. Mm -hmm. Calories. Calories. This is something that people really... Yeah. are very keen on it, especially mm -hmm. when you're watching your weight. True. Yes. Let's understand the basics that comes with it. Many people, th there's this saying that uh, when you want to manage your weight or lose weight, 
it's all about calories in, calories out. That if you just balance how much you consume and how much you, you use uh, as, yeah. uh, in your body, then you're good to go, like mm -hmm. exercise and all that. Mm -hmm. It's easier said than done. Yeah. You know, talk mm -hmm. to us, what are calories, first of all? Calories are the energy factor in food. By energy factor, I mean the amount of kilocals, the amount of, how do I put it in simpler terms, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. amount of weight that is in food. Okay. So different food have different kilocals depending on their processing value and their nutrient value. Mm -hmm. So just like you said, most of the people know energy out, energy in. Mm -hmm. But how do you determine energy out and energy in? Yes. That's where I go back to the body measurements. Mm -hmm. You need to know your age, your weight, and your, your level of activity. Mm -hmm. Once we have these calculations, we'll be able to determine as an individual how many calories in a day are you supposed to consume mm. then after all these calculations have been done then let's say we find that you need around 2,000 kilocalories in a day then we go to your daily program each food has its own different kilocalories mm -hmm. so if I say a glass of milk I will know how many kilocalories are in that mm -hmm. so in a day in a day span you calculate how much you're supposed to take and equal it to the body expenditure. By body mm -hmm. expenditure, we, we incorporate exercise. Your activities. Activity levels. Probably you're working at a jank or somewhere. Mm -hmm. You need a lot of energy. Yes. As compared mm -hmm. to somebody who just sits in the office sure. and does yeah. less That's work. where the activity levels come in. Mm -hmm. Somebody who works in a jango, the activity level is different from somebody who sits in an office. Mm -hmm. So when these calculations have been done, it's done by the B formula, body expenditure. And this formula is what gives us the total caloric intake for an individual mm -hmm. for that day. Okay. Yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. There you have it. Next time you see a mjengo person really yeah. eating, <laughs> don't <laughs> complain. You don't know what they've been through all day. Yeah. But then, yes, uh, you make it sound so easy. Mm -hmm. But the trickiest part is the calculations. Sure. For you as a nutritionist mm -hmm. and a consultant, it could be easy because you've understood how it's done and mm -hmm. all that. But then these are decisions people need to be making at home. Yeah. And it's this normal person trying to make these calculations and estimates. Mm -hmm. How do you do that? You know, one thing with the, these calculations is discipline. Mm -hmm. By discipline, I mean if you are really focused on watching your calories, first thing you need to learn calorie count. Okay. And by calorie count, when you come to us, if you visit any nutritionist, they'll give you a list of calories for all the foods. Mm -hmm. Let's say a glass of beans, there's calories for that. Okay. A glass of milk, there's calories for that. So when you start doing your calorie count as an individual at home, mm -hmm. you need to be disciplined. If you take a glass of water, you write it down. Glass okay. of water, wow. this, this calories. Mm -hmm. A cup of this, this, this calories. Mm -hmm above chocolate, this, this calorie. Mm -hmm. So that at the end of the day, when you do the math, then you match it to what you're supposed to take. You see where you went wrong mm -hmm. and you see where you adjust. Mm -hmm. So it is very important for discipline as an individual. Discipline in terms of memory and in terms of genuineness. And taking records. Exactly, mm -hmm. yeah. And if you go wrong, don't mm -hmm. get discouraged. Just sure. pick yourself mm -hmm. and then move because on. Because it's something mm -hmm. that doesn't come easy. It needs commitment and time. You okay. don't just walk into it. You need to, it's a step-by-step -step process, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes. And mm -hmm. we are talking about lifestyle decisions. So mm -hmm. lifestyle actually is something that is a journey. You sure. can't just wake up today and lose 20 pounds, mm -hmm. or you wake up today and you stop taking A, B, C, D, you just remove everything from your diet. Mm -hmm. You need you know, uh, people to teach you how you can progressively sure start this particular new lifestyle mm -hmm. for you to be disciplined and to maintain. You know, mm -hmm. the problem people make is that you say this is a new year yeah. and I want to do this and that. And then mm -hmm. you want to do all that within a week or within a day. It is something that you need to do sure. slowly and yeah. get involved in slowly. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about uh, the, the recommended amount of calories that one should consume in a day or does it vary from uh -huh. one person to Like that? I said, the, the standard value for a woman who is above 18 and is not pregnant and is not sick for a normal woman above 18 is not beyond 2000. Mm -hmm. For a man of the same characteristics that is above 18 and not sick is- And not pregnant. <laughs> of course, not pregnant. <laughs> she, will not, she will not exit 2500, mm -hmm. but those are the standard values. Okay. But like I said, each individual has his or her own caloric index. Okay. By caloric index is what I've previously talked about. We'll calculate using the formula, the B formula. By B formula, we'll incorpor incorporate your height. Not everyone is of the same height. Yes. We'll incorporate your age and we'll incorporate your activity levels. Mm -hmm. Not everyone is the same. So when you go by the standard values for a woman is not more than 2,000, for a man is not more than 2,500. Mm -hmm. But again, when you need individual caloric count and 
calculations. We'll come and work it out for you using our formula, depending on your dimensions. Okay. Yes. Wow. And mm -hmm. what I'm gathering is that there's no basic serving for everybody. Sure. Actually, we should be serving depending on our individual specific needs. Yes, sure. If you're a woman between a certain age bracket, mm -hmm. there's a certain amount of calories you need yeah. to consume. Mm -hmm. If you're a man, the same. Mm -hmm. If you're a child, the same. Sure. But then, you know, this habit of serving everybody in the family equally, mm -hmm. without mm -hmm. really looking at the nitty gritties the of these issues, could be an issue why somebody is mm -hmm. extra weight and the yeah. other one is always looking slim and nice you know so you need to understand all these issues mm -hmm. let's talk about the impact that comes with consuming less calories in case you're trying to lose weight mm -hmm. and you're depriving yourself so much mm -hmm. and you're consuming less calories less than you need mm -hmm. what is the the, the the worst case scenario first of all when we come we'll discuss about calories mm -hmm. you don't just say less you need to understand which food has what calories okay you may be drinking a soda thinking you've eaten less but actually you've eaten more a lot because mm -hmm. it has more calories than actually eating ugali and boga mm. so when you're trying to consume first of all calories are the energy building factor in our bodies we need energy for our cells for that they function properly mm -hmm. we need energy for our daily movements and we need energy for normal metabolism. Mm -hmm. So when you're trying to starve yourself, you are depriving yourself of the energy. Your mm -hmm. cells are not functioning at optimum. Mm -hmm. Your body systems are a bit slow. Okay. So you are doing more harm to yourself. Mm -hmm. So first of all, understand what kind of calories you are taking. And if you're trying to say you are consuming less calories, are the calories right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that, that actually borrows from my, my next question. Mm -hmm. Some people complain that I consume less calories, but then mm -hmm. I keep adding weight. What mm -hmm. could be the problem? Like I said, what what do you define? How do you define less, less calories? calories. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it depends on every individual. It depends on every individual and it depends on how you understand. Maybe calories to you is just the amount of food. Mm -hmm. You may be saying, ah, because I'm eating one bar of chocolate, I'm eating less calories. Mm -hmm. It does not work mm -hmm. like that. Okay. Different calorie intake for different foods. Okay. Yes. Wow. So let's mm -hmm. talk about, now that you understand exactly what the, the, the makeup of what we eat, mm -hmm. let's talk about the main meals mm -hmm. and uh, the significance and why we shouldn't skip one and leave the other mm -hmm. and, and when to take what. Yeah. I told you today it's all about eating <laughs> the right kind of things and when to eat and how to eat, because that is also another problem. Yeah. So let's talk about what to eat and how to eat it. Let's start okay. with the breakfast. There's mm -hmm. breakfast, lunch, and dinner, mm -hmm. and then there's snacking in between, uh -huh. which many people also forego, yeah. especially looking at our African context. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about breakfast, first mm -hmm. of all. Many people in our modern setting mm -hmm. have this habit of, I wake up and it's almost time and I just leave the house, I'll grab something on the way. Something is not defined. It could be anything, even something that is not healthy. Mm -hmm. Or I sip coffee as I drive to work. So, yeah, why should we, you know, really, really insist that breakfast is a meal that you can't miss? Uh, I know people know that, but depending on the nature of the urban setup, mm. you tell somebody they need to take a good breakfast, they'll tell you, I don't have time. I don't have, I cannot prepare food in the morning. But ideally, when you take a good breakfast, by a good breakfast, I mean there is protein, there is carbohydrate, there is vitamins. So just a, a typical example, you can take tea, you can take a slice of bread, one egg, and just a fruit. That mm -hmm. is a good breakfast. Mm -hmm. So when you take a good breakfast in the morning, this has filled your stomach. Your energy is pushed for the day. Mm -hmm. But when you starve yourself in the morning, you are, in you are expanding, your sugar levels have risen high. Your un hunger pants are far much wider. Mm -hmm. So when you get a chance to eat next, you'll eat a lot. Like you're starving. You'll it's like you've been starving. And when you starve yourself, mm -hmm. the body is trying to use energy from other sources in the body okay. because the calories have, have gone a bit down. So that is doing a more harm to yourself because your sugar levels are not stable. Mm -hmm. So it's important to take a good breakfast a balanced breakfast with all the three components. By the three components, I mean protein, carbohydrates, and vitamins. Mm -hmm. And when you have a good breakfast, your day will be energized. Your metabolism kicks up, and you, you just find a, a good working system. So after taking this breakfast, don't wait for so long before you take your lunch. Mm -hmm. Ideally, you should wait another three hours. You could take a snack. Mm -hmm. You know, in when you between. say snack in an so African setup, people think <laughs> you, want to, you want me to take Weetabix, you want me to drink juice. It's expensive and all A that. snack is just something. Just, you can take a fruit, mm -hmm. an apple, mm -hmm. a slice of melon. 
so that you don't space your hunger levels so much. Mm -hmm. After three hours, take something, then you take your lunch. Mm -hmm. Lunch, just a normal lunch. Again, the three important nutrients have, have to, to be, be balanced. balanced. It has to be a balanced yeah. diet. So you can take rice, beans, and a, a little cabbage, mm -hmm. just for a normal African setup. Then when you go after lunch, you need another snack. Again, after three hours? Yes, mm -hmm. after three hours. Mm -hmm. So let's say at four, around five, you can take a cup of porridge, a glass mm -hmm. of yogurt, mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. Then we go to dinner. This is where people go wrong. <laughs> dinner, you dinner, eat dinner. Meat <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, for most of the people in our yeah. urban setups, they'll skip lunch. Say, to, yeah, true. I have to take a lot of supper. That is where people go wrong. I can't go because, to bed angry. Yeah, supper, mm -hmm. you find somebody has filled the plate so much, and then after filling this, the plate, they're tired. They want to go to sleep. Mm -hmm. That is where all, you know, when you sleep, your systems have shut. Dumb. The metabolisms don't take place. And so the calories rest there with you. So you find that you gain so much so weight. Much. In that oh, process. okay. So what's the mm -hmm. latest you can eat your last meal before you go to bed? Ideally two to three hours. This is to two give to time hours. for digestion mm -hmm. and for all these things to be metabolized, metabolized mm -hmm. before you evenly sleep. before you sleep. Mm -hmm. Again, for supper, anybody who is trying to maintain and watch their weight, avoid high processed carbohydrates. High processed carbohydrates are those that are not whole grain. If you mm -hmm. take white rice, white rice is highly processed. Okay. If you take okay. so much white rice at night, it, it will not be digested. It will okay. just rest there. Mm -hmm. And these are the things that cause weight gain. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's, mm -hmm. Let me take you back to breakfast. Mm -hmm. They prefer brown bread compared to white. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the, the, the story with that? Not only brown bread, any whole grain product. Whole mm -hmm. grain products are grains that are whole, mm -hmm. brown. The husk has not been removed. Mm -hmm. For brown bread, brown chapati, brown, not brown, wheat flakes and cornflakes. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. These are wholemeal products. Okay. Wholemeal products are not highly processed. They are in their whole form. They, are, they have a lot of fiber. When you take them in the body, they provide a filling effect. So when you are yeah, filled so in the you'll morning, be fuller, longer. you'll be fuller longer. Ah, yes. that's, that's nice yeah. to know. Let's talk about how people decorate and spice up mm -hmm. these, these, these meals. There is mm -hmm. margarine, there is butter, there is... There's mm -hmm. just a lot of things we put. Are they healthy? Are um, they, could, be, could they be a source of weight gain as well? To some extent, they are. Mm -hmm. Like I said, an individual requires up to 15 to 30% of fat in a day. Mm -hmm. So when you're talking about fat, when you want to take bread in the morning, just spread a little margarine. You don't feel it so much. When mm -hmm. you feel it so much, now it becomes dangerous. Mm -hmm. Because again, you need that fat in your body. For fat, you need it for the lining of the cells. Mm -hmm. You need good working cells. Mm -hmm. And when you, you take so much, then it will lead to other things like cholesterol and all that yeah, build up. So you need that in your body. They are not bad. They are not but fat is not bad. Fat is not bad. <laughs> but in, but in moderate portions, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are there any like hel healthy, I'm not saying margarine, probably for mm -hmm. there are people who love margarine, but are there, healthy, yeah. are there healthy options that somebody can use to spice up, you to know, spice that bread? Up or the bread. Yeah. There are so many. There is honey. <laughs> They yeah. spin at, mm -hmm. but in moderate portions. Yeah. But uh, we do advise on or honey. avocado. I've seen avocado, people use that. I've tried yes. that. It's really Actually amazing. Actually, it's very amazing. Yeah. So all that works. You can just you could toast your bread. Mm -hmm. Just toast it. Yeah. But it's the things that work. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about sugar. Mm -hmm. um, talk to us about how it relates to weight as well. This sugar that we take three spoons or four. <laughs> you know, and you, sugar, you start sugar, and sugar. Yeah, in the morning. One thing people need to understand about sugar is that when it is digested, it's in it's taken in high quantities. It goes into the body and it's converted to fat. Mm. So when you take so much sugar, we do advise people to take cooked sugar. Like when you take tea, instead of mixing it in your tea, just boil it in the tea mm. so that it is like cooked. The way the like the traditional way. Like the traditional way. Our mothers used to prepare tea. But when you take so much sugar, like I said, processed food, processed sugar, mm -hmm. especially white sugar, it goes into the body, it is converted to fat. Mm -hmm. When it is converted to fat, obesity comes in. When obesity comes in, may lead to other things like diabetes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. You talked about snacking, mm -hmm. which is okay. You've told us that it can help you not to overeat yeah. when the next meal comes. Mm -hmm. But there is, there, is, there is also an issue with, with snacking if you don't do it the right way. Yeah. Talk to us about the dangerous habits of, of snacking as well. Because people think it's all about snacking. But then if you don't do it the right way, mm -hmm. it can be a source of weight gain. 
and you never understand where your weight is coming from. When talking about snacking, we look at foods that are high, have a low GI value. Mm -hmm. By a low GI value, I mean the glycemic index. Okay. The glycemic index is the factor in foods that raises the sugar levels. Mm -hmm. So high, sugar le high GI foods are like biscuits. Things like biscuits, mm -hmm. when you consume them because you think it's a snack, mm -hmm. actually it raises your sugar levels, then it drops drastically. Mm -hmm. Again, it widens. It gives so much hunger. So when you're snacking, take, fo take foods that are low in GI. By low in GI, I mean things like fruits. Any fruit has a low GI value mm -hmm. except watermelon. Fruits, you can take water, you can take fresh juice. Water processed. is a snack. It is a snack. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It is. It is. We'll okay. come to water later. Oh, yes, we will. So avoid these processed foods. I, actually, when you are snacking, avoid processed foods and carbonated drinks. Mm. Those are the foods with high GI values. Mm. By carbonated drinks, I mean anything that is fizzy. Yeah, soda. fizzy drinks, yeah. yeah. Mm. So those are the ones that are dangerous. And that, cakes. those are the things people love in between. Mm. Yeah. There's cakes, there's carbonated foods, mm -hmm. and there's just sugary foods, sweet, chocolate, sweets, and mm -hmm. all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So those are dangerous snacks. Good snacks are the fruits, the what the fruit juices, the punches. You can take a fruit punch. Salads, salads, fruit salads. and all that. Mm -hmm. Those are good snacks. There was a concern I read somewhere mm -hmm. that if you eat too much sugary fruits, it's also bad. Is it? Is it? When you're talking about fruits again, when you say sugary fruits, you will go back to the GI levels. I okay. said fruits like watermelon have okay. high GI values. Okay. So again, fruits, depending on how they raise your blood sugar, mm -hmm. they could be bad. Okay. Too much wow. watermelon, too much bananas could be bad for your body. Okay. So you take them so you just don't take ration. fruits as long as it's a fruit yeah. is healthy. You, you don't have take, to also balance. You know, there are some people you tell them to take fruits, they go, they go the take way. 10 apples. <laughs> that is bad. It's dangerous. Yeah. For any nutrient that is consumed in the body, in moderation, everything in moderation. You don't do overdo another; mm -hmm. that will cause another problem. Okay. Yeah. Let's uh, finish up with the meals. Talk mm -hmm. about dinner. I know you're not supposed to eat meat. Who That's said? Who <laughs> 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 done my research? <laughs> or if you you're eating it. <laughs> You have to like be very minimal at it or eat it very mm -hmm. early because uh, I don't know. Talk to us about the kind of meals we should avoid. You know, when our body is at rest. When when people are trying to eat, there are so many theories. Like you say, don't eat meat. Nobody says you should not eat you should, meat. You can, eh? But during supper, if it is red meat, cow meat, that is, just take not more than four slices, okay. not more than four chunks. Mm -hmm. But don't cut not it so quarter. big. <laughs> don't cut it so big. Four, four just big cut pieces. Four, four pieces for uh -huh, supper is uh -huh. enough. Okay. But again, when it comes to red meat, as a nutritionist, again, we don't advise on that so much. So prefer the lean meat, the white meats, mm -hmm. the chickens, the fish. That is better. Okay. Yeah. So you can do meat, but in you moderation. You can do meat, but in moderation. Okay. Again, you need meat. Are there meat any other kind of foods you should avoid? Or during or dinner. Yes. Yes. When our body is at rest. Number one, so number one, number one, carbs. Especially highly processed carbs. Mm -hmm. During dinner, do a smaller portion of carbs. If you must eat it. There are people who cannot eat. You tell somebody you avoid carbs. and Anakuliza, how will I take vegetables without ugali? Mm. So Talk just to slice. some people from Western, <laughs> tell them that they should avoid ugali at night. During dinner, <laughs> if you have to take it, slice it, let it be a quarter of your plate. Okay. If your plate is full, let it be a quarter. The vegetables take half and the proteins take another quarter. So that way you reduce on the carbohydrates. But if you are really serious, you should avoid carbs completely, especially the highly processed. By highly processed, I mean short grain rice. That is the number one killer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Short grain rice, you eat so much rice at night when you sleep. So if you have to take carbohydrates, just take a brown chapati or brown rice. Mm. Brown rice is, is usually very recommended yeah. mm -hmm. uh, as compared to white. Let's talk about drinks. Mm -hmm. You know, this yeah. is where water comes in. This is yeah. where water comes yes. in. Mm -hmm. Water, water, water. There are people who don't like water, but this you've had. A normal individual needs up to eight glasses a day. Mm. But again, if you are on a weight loss program, people can go more. It, it can be calculated for you. Some people can go up to 13. Mm -hmm. But a normal individual should take eight glasses of water. Or two when liters. you tell when uh, it's equal to two liters. Yes. When you tell somebody eight glasses, they say that is so much. But again, you <laughs> don't have to take it at, All once. at once. You space it in a day. Yeah, true. So that. It's, advice, it's advisable when you wake up in the morning. The first thing that should go into your stomach is water. Is water. When you take water, your body picks up. Okay. 
your mind becomes alert and all their systems are hydrated mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. so eight glasses a day if you take one glass in the morning count these glasses spaces within two hours or how many space it in a day so that it comes to eight that mm -hmm. is for a normal individual mm -hmm. for an athlete it becomes different mm -hmm. it, they could it's require more, more. Mm -hmm. yeah how does water helps us anyway water one thing about water hydration hydration is very important mm -hmm. we have cells in the body that need normal function for a cell to function for properly and for any organ to function they need to be lubricated if you don't take enough water your system becomes rough it becomes dry your systems are struggling to work because there's not much water in the body water is very good for your skin mm -hmm. it hydrates the skin the skin glows i know women love to glow when you start yeah. drinking water you'll notice the difference people will even tell you you are glowing mm -hmm. yeah okay and it keeps away all these rashes all these skin infections mm -hmm. it's something that hydrates the system mm -hmm. yeah when it when is it recommended to make a decision whether to take warm or cold water are there any specific times or you can just consume cold water throughout uh, i won't say cold or warm mm -hmm. but one thing with warm water not only water but any warm food it's just the speedy process of metabolism. Okay. When you take warm water, it speeds up the process. If you're having indigestion, if your stomach is clogged up, you take warm water, it will open up. Mm -hmm. It's just the speeding process of digestion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's also that concern that mm -hmm. if you add lemon mm -hmm. in your water, it loses... It loses weight. <laughs> yeah, no, you can lose weight. There are people who say it, it can cause dehydration if you consume too much of lemon water. I don't know. You can you can clarify on that issue. Does is lemon harmful? Or? No, mm -hmm. lemon is not harmful. But again, nothing should be taken in a, in excess, mm -hmm. because one thing people recommend lemon is because of its. When you take lemon, you feel full because mm -hmm. it's uh, we call it, it suppresses appetite. Mm -hmm. So when you take lemon, you won't feel like binging so much. Okay. And then it has which it, is good when you're trying to good. lose weight. So yeah. Don't take it, it in so much because remember lemon has vitamin C mm -hmm. and for every vitamin, for every nutrient, it should not be taken in excess because yeah. again we'll have nutrient disorders that we don't need. Mm -hmm. So it is good for the speeding process of metabolism and for the suppressing effect. Mm -hmm. It also has other healing properties that I know we know of, the colds and all that, mm -hmm. but not in excess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about dairy products. Mm -hmm. Yes, they say if you want to lose weight, stay away from all those dairy products, <laughs> milk, and all that. What's the relationship between this and the, the, the weight, the body weight? And should we like avoid completely 100%? <laughs> Nobody should never avoid dairy completely <laughs> unless you have, uh, you have like intolerance to something like lactose or something. Mm -hmm. But dairy products, we need them for the protein. Mm -hmm. But in moderation, you, you, don't, you don't have to take 10 glasses of milk. Mm -hmm. Actually, milk is very important in a day. Mm -hmm. Why dairy products, when we talk of dairy products, what major nutrients we get from dairy products are the calcium and the protein. Mm -hmm. We need the calcium. We need the calcium for our teeth, we need the calcium for our bones. So the moment you get rid of dairy products, com no, sorry, dairy products completely, we'll be suppressing our body of calcium. Leave alone the protein that you're worried about. Mm -hmm. And calcium is another problem. You'll have weak bones and all that. Mm -hmm. So dairy products, they could contribute to weight gain because of the presence of protein when you take something in excess. Mm -hmm. But we need them in our diet, mm -hmm. in those proportions that will be worked out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, generally speaking, now that we've talked about all these meals, and I know there's a lot, mm -hmm. a lot still that we've not touched on that probably we can do mm -hmm. in the coming days. But then... Uh, on a general perspective, th th there has to be meal plans for each and every person. Are they mm. designed according to lifestyle? What are some of the things that you consider when you're trying to come up with a meal plan for someone? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you're trying to come up with a meal plan, first of all, we look at so many issues. Mm -hmm. You don't just walk in and uh, write a meal plan for you. Mm -hmm. We look at the background of this person. Mm -hmm. If I tell this person to take a cup of brown rice, mm -hmm. is this person able to access brown rice? Yeah, yeah. And we yeah, also exactly, look at because yeah, you find mm -hmm. so many things are, for some people mm -hmm. you cannot find them, yeah. but they are recommended. So you don't know what to do, what options are there. Yeah. yeah, we also look at the social background and the livelihood. Is this person living alone? Does this person have children? We look at underlying disorders. This person could be hypertensive. This person could be pregnant. This mm -hmm. person could mm -hmm. have any mm -hmm. other disease. Mm -hmm. And apart from the body measurements of the height, weight, and all that, we look at so many social factors in the background. 
you could be writing a meal plan for somebody who is just going to look at it. If it's a bachelor, you tell somebody to take a toast of bread, they'll ask you who will cook that. Mm. So you have to look at so many <laughs> factors. When you are dealing Grilled with an chicken breast. Yeah. <laughs> you, when you are dealing yeah. with an individual, you take that individual personally. Not okay. everybody is the same. Mm. So you work the individual according to how they can they match. Okay. I may tell somebody to take brown rice, another person I will tell to take ngwashe, okay. depending on what they are about, mm -hmm. they are able to afford. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, for people who are in a family setup, mm -hmm. you don't have much control on what's cooked and what you consume. What do you advise mm -hmm. them? They want to live a healthy lifestyle, mm -hmm. but they don't get to make the kitchen decisions. Yeah, that again comes to the social background, mm -hmm. who cooks in the family, who brings money into the family. Mm -hmm. Because you may find that what will be cooked is what you will eat. Yes. So it's upon you to just have a discussion with this person at home. Tell them, the doctor said I should eat green leaves, vegetable. Can we cook it today? Mm. Is it possible to adjust for me or something like that? Mm -hmm. If it is possible, then you can work on something. That is one of the challenges we face, by the way, for larger families, mm -hmm. because you tell somebody they need to take something that is different from what they cook at home. They find a lot of resistance from home. But just have a discussion. Just tell them to come to the clinic with the caregiver, maybe the person who mm. provides that at home. Then after all that understanding, it can be worked on. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's also talk about uh, the other issue, which is cost. Yeah. There was a time there was the healthier mm. options are so unavailable mm -hmm. and because of that when you find them they're mm -hmm. so costly yeah uh, if you look at you know the the processed foods mm -hmm. the canned you know products these are very available and very affordable and mm -hmm. this is what people go for yeah you just add hot water and it's ready in 15 minutes you eat mm -hmm. talk to us about cost is living healthy very costly something just for the rich and then that kind of food if you ask me i will say you'd rather pay for that good food than paying to treat hypertension later, mm. than paying to treat obesity later, mm. than paying to treat diabetes later. If you're supposed to live a healthy lifestyle and you're supposed to buy brown rice, guache, and you say it is expensive, when you have in the back of your mind that you're trying to prevent something larger, it won't matter to you. Mm -hmm. Because again, when I tell you, when you say it is expensive, it shouldn't matter to you much because again you're not going to buy the whole shop mm -hmm. we're doing it in portions mm -hmm. i know it is expensive some people may ignore that because of the cost yeah. but we should have the health impact on your body mm -hmm. your body could cost so much cost on you later when mm -hmm. you don't take care of it mm -hmm. so it's important to spend it now take care of it now than going to spend so many sessions in the doctor later. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. And mm -hmm. the good thing about this is that you know if we start inculcating that earlier in our families, yeah. we get to bring up these coming generations sure. with that mm -hmm. culture, that value of yeah. understanding the healthier options of eating and mm -hmm. living, and they get to carry that forward, yeah, sure. moving forward. But mm -hmm. then if we you know keep postponing and uh, keep becoming too, I would mm -hmm. call it stingy on ourselves. Yeah. Then mm -hmm. we are only doing the harm on ourselves, nobody else. Yeah. Let's talk about, you know, the kind of, the level of awareness in mm -hmm. healthy living. I know in your office probably, what's the traffic like? Are people embracing healthy living? You know, healthy living, one of the major challenges we have is people have information, but it's not the right information. Mm -hmm. Like you've said, somebody may say, we don't take meat, <laughs> we should not take dairy products. This is Google though. <laughs> yeah, people have so much information, yes. but it is not the right information. Yeah. So when you get to sit down with a dietitian and a nutritionist, they explain these things to you, yeah. and you start to make sense of them, you realize, oh, it's not just as simple. Mm -hmm. Somebody may think, ah, let's just eat ngwashe, the nutritionists say that. but. We don't, we don't only say that. There's mm -hmm. so much that it, in, it involves in healthy eating. And some people just take it for granted. Mm -hmm. It should be something that people should be much aware of. Mm -hmm. And people are getting aware of it. When people come and you explain things to them, they say, wow, wow, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. And it helps. It helps somebody gets to get out when they are relieved and mm -hmm. when feeling much better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What, what is the traffic like compared to, you know, it's been a journey. Mm -hmm. Are people slowly you know taking up this kind of living up to now people are mm -hmm. because you find that so many lifestyle disorders are with us now mm -hmm. and now people are start starting to realize these things can be controlled mm -hmm. and when people realize that things can be controlled they start getting interested people start coming in 
I don't want to get this. I don't want to reach there. I don't want to reach there. Help me. So we find a lot of cases that are willing to just start controlling. Mm -hmm. Nutrition is all about prevention. Prevention, prevention, prevention. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, that's the mm -hmm. approach. You save a lot of money. Yes. Yeah, before you get mm -hmm. sick, why don't you prevent yourself from getting sick? Sure. Mm -hmm. Let's also talk about, you know, they say that healthy food is boring, it's mm -hmm. boiled, it's... Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is that a myth or... Uh, yeah. It is true because when you say healthy food, first of all, anything that is dipped in fat is so much salty, so much sugary. Spicy. Those are what we love. Yeah. But yeah. they are not healthy. <laughs> so that's why people will say they are boring. Because when you come, I'll tell you, just go boil your meat, grill your meat. Then you say it doesn't have taste. Mm. But it is healthy. Yes, people find it boring. But again, like I said, it depends on your discipline. It depends on your commitment. Once you start taking that food, you'll, re you'll realize, actually, this is better. The other day, I was at a visiting school at a high school, mm -hmm. and you know the kind of foods they prepare in high school? Yeah, yeah, you I realize, remember. actually, this food is actually sweeter than what is outside there, because it is <laughs> really? just, just food that is actually... <laughs> the basic, without It's just any the spice. basic, so not so much fat, not so much salt. It's what we need in the body. Mm, and you get to eat at mm -hmm. 6 p.m. Yes, so it... <laughs> The recommended time. You'll, once yeah. you get used to it, at first you may say this is boring, but when you get into the product program, you'll get used to it and you'll you enjoy it. You know the good it. thing about mm -hmm. our bodies is that you can actually speak to it. Yeah. The worst thing that can happen to you as a human being is if your body is controlling you. Sure. You know, the good mm. thing is that we can actually tell our bodies this is the direction. Yeah. And that is where we are going this sure. year. Mm -hmm. And that is what your body will respond yeah. to. And mm -hmm. I'll tell you something interesting. If I know you've, you, you also know this, where there, there are certain cravings like sugar, coffee, that just come because of the way we've been living. Yeah. But once you clean up your body, you clean yeah. up your system, mm -hmm. you go through a detox program and you're cleansed. You realize that there Those are things you don't, you don't even need. True. There are things that you don't even mm -hmm. need. So all we need is to understand and you uh -huh. know, be aware and mm. talk to the right kind of people to tell us the right kind of information mm -hmm. to know how we can be able to better make these decisions. Sure. Don't just wake up and decide. Mm -hmm. Because discipline is also another issue. You can decide, but then maybe you cannot stick to that plan yeah. for long. Mm -hmm. But somebody who knows will break it down for you and walk with you through the journey, and it can sure. be very possible. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about how is it that you manage to make this information you know, reach as many people as possible. What are some of the ways you think we can use, mm -hmm. apart from what you're doing here, mm -hmm. you know, like creating this awareness? Great awareness. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say nowadays means have been made so much. There's online platform, there's so many ways to pass information. When you go online, you can always visit all the sites, but you can visit our site, www.nutritionsoul.co.ke. There are so many, they, they are you can visit the health centers. The health centers have nutrition programs with them. Our center is at Medanta Africa in NHIF. And all this, their information can be passed. Mm -hmm. Most of the ways of passing information now is online. It mm -hmm. works a lot. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And don't go to those sites. There, there are people who say everything nowadays mm -hmm. causes cancer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. People live in fear. Mm -hmm. but they'll tell you, uh, in this era, because of these uh, conversations about healthy living and consuming the right kind of things. There's this fear that has been inflicted on us that everything is causing cancer today. Don't consume this, don't consume yeah. that. And we, we, we do not know the way forward. How can we be able to be, you know, a population that, that can make decisions without being influenced without by being the wrong influenced. kind of information? L like I said, hearsay is there. Everybody will tell you things, mm -hmm. this and that. But once you get the right information from the right professional, they'll tell you highly processed foods. That is the number one mm -hmm. cancer cause. Mm -hmm. Once you get the right information, I think you'll be in the right path. Because now everybody is saying everything, mm -hmm. everyone is afraid of everything, everybody wants to say anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll just say get the right information mm -hmm. from the right professionals, mm -hmm. then they'll guide you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thank mm -hmm. you so much for your time, Laura. Thank you. Probably <laughs> as we bring this conversation to a close, we've really learned a lot. I know these are conversations we can always have over and over again. Yeah. Your final remarks, as you leave my viewer this morning, what are mm -hmm. some of those things that you think they should remember? Right now, people are trying <laughs> to make a lot of lifestyle changes yeah. here and there and mm -hmm. decisions here and there. Talk to us the next 365 days. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what should we? The next 365 it? days, number one, I want you to count your calories. Come, get a nutritionist, get a dietitian, let them teach you on calorie count. Write down everything you take in a day so that it matches with your caloric intake. And then avoid highly processed foods. 
Those are my only two pointers. Mm -hmm. Let's watch this weight. Let's cleanse our systems. Let's drink water. Please, <laughs> let's drink water. Mm -hmm. That's all I love to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you so much for your mm -hmm. time once again. Mm -hmm. And thank you for watching the show this far. We've really learned a lot. How to cleanse, how to exercise, and how to eat the right things and when to eat them, how to eat them. Thank you so much for staying with us. My name is Afin Achieng. We really appreciate your company until this far. Why don't you start that journey of becoming a better you, a healthier you? And remember, you have the power in your hands. You can actually influence the road yourself. The doctors can do their part, but then they come way in later because of certain things that you failed to do yourself at the comfort of your house. So why don't you start now? taking the prevention approach instead of the reactions that come with medication and all those things that doctors recommend. Let's start living healthy, make decisions in a healthy way, and let's create healthy minds that will create, will come up with healthier decisions. And if you live a healthy life, your body will be healthier and you'll have the kind of the healthier cravings. You'll crave for the healthy options that are out there. My name is Afina Ching once again. On behalf of the entire production crew that made this a success, have a nice day and enjoy the rest of your viewing.